reading Cahiers du Cinema, the 1950s, Neorealism, Hollywood, New Wave by Jim Heller and David Wilson. Part one, French cinema, introduction. Although American and Italian cinema often seem to be the main interest of the Cahiers critics, more often than not in their writings on those cinemas, what was fundamentally at stake was French cinema. When Romer and Rivette talk about American cinema as, quote, efficacious, end quote, elegant, contemplative, moral, or when they talk about the combined rigor, improvisation, and lucidity of Rossellini, they make it clear that these are precisely the qualities they find lacking in French cinema. In other words, and inevitably, given the cinema they had grown up, up with, French cinema provided the frame or context with which they thought about the cinema itself. And given their aspirations toward filmmaking, French cinema was also the field of battle, a battle which, of course, the Nouvelle Vague filmmakers were largely to win. Thus, Jacques Daniel Valcruz is quite clear about the historical importance of the publication of Truffaut's, quote, Un certain tendance du cinéma français, end quote, in 1954. Cahiers identified its enemies, and those enemies identified Cahiers. Certainly, Truffaut's essay is vastly polemical. He admits, in concluding, to its being subject to, quote, a great deal of emotion and taking sides, end quote. The significance of the essay in other than those polemical terms is rather less than its reputation merits. It tends to be diffuse and is significantly blurred in its ar arguments by Truffaut's rather reactionary ideological assumptions. At the same time, the essay can begin to suggest what Cahiers dislike in mainstream French cinema of the time and why. Truffaut points to three different elements in the French cinema, although he links them, they are not in fact mutually dependent. First, he takes as chief avatars of the quote, tradition of quality, end quote, the screenwriters, adapters, Jean Arranch and Pierre Post, characterizing them as primarily literary men, contemptuous of the cinema and its public. Quote, when they hand in their scenario, the film is done. The mateur en scène, in their eyes, is the gentleman who adds the pictures to it. End quote. That such men lack authentic individual personality is self-evident. For Truffaut, the diversity of both the subjects and the directors they work with. Second, at the level of content, this, quote, official, end quote, cinema is characterized as wishing to be, in moral terms, anti-bourgeois against family, religion, and so on, despite the bourgeois nature of both its producers and its audiences. Quote, they give the public its habitual dose of smut, non-conformity, non and facile audacity, end quote. Lastly, the general literary quality is complemented in visual terms by, quote, scholarly framing, complicated lighting effects, quote, polished, end quote, photography, end of quote. Truffaut's polemic was not an empty one, of course. It was also a polemic for a different French cinema. He considered the dominance of the tradition of quality and of, quote, psychological realism, end quote, which he opposed to the pre-war, quote, poetic realism, end quote, responsible for public incomprehension of, quote, such new works as Les Carreaux d'Or, Casque d'Or, not to mention La Dames du Bois de Boulogne and Orphée, end quote. The names Truffaut cites in arguing for a French cinema of auteurs are Renoir, Bresson, Coteau, Becker, Gantz, Ophuls, Tati, Leinhardt, which more or less exhaust Cahiers' French auteurs before the Nouvelle Vague, though Guitry was later revalued, particularly by Truffaut. Cahiers' interest in the early work of Ostruck, Franju, and Bottom had much more to do with their own filmmaking aspirations. Such filmmakers, Truffaut argued, have a, quote, worldview at least as valuable as that of Arach and Boast, end quote, would be incapable of conceiving characters as, quote, abject, end quote. As Arantxas and Boast and, quote, curious coincidence, they are auteurs who often write their dialogue and some of them themselves create the stories they direct, end quote. Is this anything more than a pretty conventional plea for authentic personality and freedom to write as well as direct, question mark? One significant factor Truffaut points to is the importance not just of a worldview, but a particular kind of worldview. In Truffaut's argument, generosity, optimism, and ambiguity, all values one associates very much with André Bazin, are valued above what he takes to be misanthropy, pessimism, nonconformity. Also important is the value placed on audacities of realization. Truffaut mentions, for example, the gate, or quote, the gate of Hulat, the mise-en-scene of Les Carreaux d'Or, the direction of actors in Madame Day, end quote, above audacities of conception or content. In a very important sense, Truffaut, in a passage quoted by Hoveda in his article on Les 400 Coups, manifests a concern with, quote, realism, end quote, as opposed to, quote, academicism, end quote. Quote, so careful is the traditional school to lock these beings in a closed world, barricaded by formulae, placed on words, maxims, instead of letting us see them for ourselves with our own eyes, end quote. Louis Marquerelles, a frequent contributor to Cahiers from 1956 onwards, is very clear about these tendencies. Writing in 1958, he argues that the French cinema in the post-war years, quote, missing the turning towards neorealism, which it might have taken, moved instead towards academicism in the great, quote, machine, end quote, constructions of directors such as Clement and Clouseau. Marquerelles, like Truffaut, felt that owning, or Marquerelles, like Truffaut, felt that owing 
to a lack of the, quote, generosity of inspiration, which animated the pre-war realist school, end quote. Frank Cinema risked producing only, quote, works lacking real creative originality, adaptations of fam famous novels, imitations of American styles, films whose distinction is a matter of craftsmanship rather than originality, authenticity, the, the, the excitement of living. The articles translated and printed here all relate very clearly to the broad thrust of Truffaut's polemic, though they need to be supplemented by important writings by Bazin, Truffaut, Godard, and others on Renoir, Bresson, Gantz, Guitry, Coteau, Becker, Ophuls, Astruc, Franju, Vadim. Truffaut wrote two years before the appearance of Astruc's Les Malvais, Rencontre, 1955, and three years before Vadim's Et Dieu. Cria La Femme, 1956, both of which were important signposts for a Nouvelle Vogue, or Nouvelle Vague, which, after the Cannes Festival triumph of Truffaut's Le 400 Coup in Resnais Hiroshima Mon Amour in 1959, was no longer in doubt. Meanwhile, Kaye wrote about the French cinema they admired, and Truffaut's distaste for the, quote, academic, end quote, led him along some pretty strange paths, such as Guitry's work, rather than the French cinema they abhor abhorred. Becker's work, as Truffaut says in his review of Touche Pas au Grisby, was, quote, both a lesson and an encouragement, end quote. What Truffaut values in Becker neatly exemplifies his arguments in, quote, un certain tendance du cinéma français, end quote. Becker's personal mark on the film, a certain autobiographical element and closeness to personal experience, a refusal of the conventional and the vulgar, and, quote, not so much his choice of subject as how he chooses to treat the subject, end quote. Godard deals similarly with, say, on Jamey, question mark. But then this was how Truffaut himself had dealt with et Dieu, Crea la femme. Quote, Bottom's great strength is in the fact that he talks only about things he knows well. And above all, as a beginner, he describes himself with all his qualities and defects through these characters. End quote. Bottom was, of course, the closest in age of the new directors to Godard and Truffaut and the closest in sensibility. So it was not so it was no surprise that, quote, our only modern filmmaker, end quote, as Kaye called Bottom, should stimulate the filmmaker in Godard. Like Truffaut on Becker, Godard's discussion of Sets on Jamais, question mark, is concerned with attitudes to subject matter, and more particularly, with reflecting upon detailed problems of mise-en-scene, very much the concerns of future filmmakers. The Kaye polemic about French cinema did not involve only being for or against certain auteurs. There was also a concern with the economics of production and distribution, and with the more general conditions, social, political, and cultural, of production. As the title of the 1957 editorial discussion, quote, Six Characters in Search of Auteurs, end quote, implies, Kaye was anxious both to understand why a few rather special auteurs apart, French cinema's prospects looked so bleak, and to try to promote a new cinema. One factor which lies just below the surface in the discussion as elsewhere, in this discussion as elsewhere, is articulated by Marquerelles when he comments, from the vantage point of 1958, that work is being produced, quote, which may once more restore France to the position of creative eminence, which she held in the 1930s, end quote. If, in the final analysis, the six participants in the discussion do not come up with anything very concrete to explain why there was, quote, something rotten, end quote, in France's, quote, cinematographic kingdom, end quote, much that is very revealing is said en route. The most insistent theme of the discussion, also strongly present in Romer's and Rivette's discussions of American cinema, is French cinema's supposed failure to represent contemporary French society, while the strength of both American and Italian cinema is taken to be precisely their social context. Cast, quote, doing duty as the Marxist, end quote, as he puts it, tries to get some discussions of economics, but without much success. The view expressed several times that Frank cinema has nothing to say, hides the fact that these discussion participants simply do not much like what is being said. And just as this picks up from Truffaut, so his complaints about, quote, academicism, end quote, also find clear echoes here, given a new, more urgent edge by Rivette's plea for, quote, a spirit of poverty, end quote, for taking risk and, quote, filming with whatever turns up, end quote. But in many ways, what is most interesting in the discussion is the light in which it places Truffaut's earlier polemic. Truffaut's apparent obsessive concern with literature and literary adaptation looks less idiosyncratic when, three and a half years later, this group is still so obsessed, a clear enough indication of the degree to which both good and bad French cinema depend on adapting literary works, and, of course, of the degree to which literature, and particularly the novel, dominated French culture. This was a domination which only began to be shaken off as the Nouvelle Vague emerged. Despite a continuing close relationship between novel and cinema, think of Marguerite Duras, Alain Rob Grillet, or Grillet, not the least of the long-term achievements of the Nouvelle Vague, was to put cinema into the predominant position in French culture, which the novel had occupied. At Cannes in 1959, Truffaut's Les, Coups, Les 400 Coups won the Director's Prize in René's 
Hiroshima Mon Amour won the International Critics Prize. The renewal of French cinema, signs of which had been seen in a struct in Bottom and Franju, seemed to have come. Truffaut's and Resnais' films were by no means the only ones to make the arrival of the Nouvelle Vague. Chabral's Les Beaux Surge, 1958, preceded them both, for example, but they were particularly important public signs of the new times, and in many ways representative of the very different new aesthetic strategies. The ways in which Kaye dealt with the two films are very revealing of the situation Kaye found itself in at the end of the 1950s. Le 400 Coup was most obviously the kind of film which Truffaut's own polemic had wanted to encourage, and which Rivette's plea for taking risk, etc., would suggest, giving Truffaut's earlier praise for the presence of Becker's personality in Grisby and his comments on Guitry that, quote, he experiences the desire to impregnate celluloid, and the films which are born from the or from this intoxicating parallel activity testify lastingly to the nature, character, temperament, and gifts of Guitry. It's enough, I believe, that a film resembles its author for it to be impossible to say that it's not cinema, end quote. It is not surprising that Hoveda finds every shot of Le 400 Coup, quote, crowded with Truffaut's ideas and imagination, end quote. Godard characteristically, nomic and elusive, quote, reads, end quote, the film out of Truffaut's critical formation, as Hoveda does quite explicitly. But what is most striking, striking about Hoveda's account of the film is its remarkably close resemblance to Bezin's account of Bicycle Thieves, as if Le 400 Coup came along to confirm, just over 10 years after De Sica's film, the same realist and humanist avocation of cinema with a renewed set of realist convictions. Hoveda's choice of language, conscious or not, leaves no doubt about the resemblance. Truffaut has, quote, systematically drained the story of any too heavy emphases, end quote, so that his, quote, hero acquires an ambiguity that endows him with truth, end quote, quote, the tragedy of everyday life, end quote, quote, hostile world, end quote, quote, pheno phenomen phenomenological description, end quote, quote, illusion of the, quote, direct, end quote, and, quote, untampered with, end quote, end of quote, quote, a passion for everything that at first seems trivial, end quote, and so on. It is the triumph in French cinema and in Truffaut, appropriately enough, given the personally close relationship between Bazin and Truffaut of the realist aesthetic which Bazin elaborated on the basis of Italian neorealism. And Hoyveda's response to the film was the dominant Kaye response. Rivet, who will speak with a rather different voice when discussing Hiroshima Mon Amour, comparing Truffaut's aesthetic with Rossellini's, talks of the, quote, purity of the look. Perhaps it is enough to believe that things are what they are to be able to see them quite simply on the screen just as they are in reality, end quote. If Le 400 Coup seemed to offer and to be exemplary in offering that, quote, direct engagement with reality, end quote, which Leinhardt in the, quote, six characters, end quote, discussion found lacking in Frank cinema. Then Hiroshima Mon Amour seemed to offer what, in the same discussion, Rivette had called for, for cinema to, quote, go further than literature, end quote. In this perspective, Hiroshima was seen as a modernist renewal of, quote, classical, end quote, narrative, literary, by all means, but beyond contemporary French literature, and, in other senses, thoroughly cinematic, while Hiroshima inspires the admiration and interest of all those discussing it, it hardly inspires the affection that greeted Truffaut's film. Truffaut was, of course, their long-standing colleague, but the differences of response seems to owe most to the very different aesthetic strategies of the two films, and to Kaye's clear and continuing preference for classical narrative. In some very important senses, however, this discussion of Hiroshima, which includes critics, filmmakers, whose own films were to raise, in very different ways, important formal questions, Godard and Rivette in particular, of course, must be seen as markedly and crucially transitional. Here, for example, we find Romer probably the most conservative of those present, apparently ready, faced by a, quote, totally new film, end quote, perhaps, quote, the most important film since the war, the first modern film of sound cinema, end quote, to abandon a classicism he had been defining and staunchly defending since at least 1947, or Godard raising, quote, the famous problem of the text and the image, end quote, with no one else quite understanding what he means, or Rivet reflecting upon the dialectical, quote, double movement of consciousness, end quote, in the representation of cinema within the cinema, or Rivet and Godard pointing out the degree to which Resnay, Resnay's film returns to the montage concepts of Eisenstein. At the same time, this beginning of an engagement with, quote, modernism, end quote, poses some difficult questions about modernism's political implications and affiliations. Here, hastily and somewhat confusingly buried in references to an, quote, aesthetic left, end quote, and to Resnay being, quote, ahead of his time, end quote, by, quote, remaining true to October, end quote. And despite the recognition of radical formal renewal in Hiroshima and of the relationship to Eisenstein, what finally emerges, as with the formerly very different Truffaut film, is a characteristically, quote, Bazinian, end quote, reading. Thus, Rivette, on Resnay's view of the modern world, quote, not only does he accept, accept it, but he analyzes it deeply with lucidity and with love. Since this is the world in which we believe, or we live in love, then for Resnay, it is the, this world that is good, 
just, and true, end quote. Bazin was not long dead. Fittingly, Bazin's position, aesthetic and ideological, finds itself at once enshrined in and threatened by the modes in which Cayes came to critical terms with the first triumphs of Nouvelle Vague. And I was reading part one, French cinema introduction in Cayes to Cinema, the 1950s, Neorealism, Hollywood, New Wave by Jim Hiller and David Wilson. <laughs> 